Hello, it's Rimantas Petrauskas. In this video I will demonstrate how to update the remote read copper software. Here I have a list of steps we need to do. Before we begin, I will just mention that you can apply the update even if your system has open threads. The first step is to log into your remote read copper control panel. We immediately land in the welcome page. This is from where we will do the update to the database. Second step is to back up your data. We go to the export section and we click on the backup my database. This will create a file with your data and you need to save it to your computer. In case something goes wrong, you can always go back and restore your current data. The third step is to go to the welcome page. This is very important. Before you move to the next step, make sure that you leave your remote control panel window exactly at the welcome page. The fourth step is to log into your FTP server. For this, I am using Total Commander, but you can use any FTP client you want. I log into my FTP server where my remote read copper files are stored. Those are the files I will need to update. You should back up those files as well. You may want to create a separate folder on your computer and download those files before applying updates. I'm not going to do this because I have all of them already backed up, but you should back up those files in case something goes wrong. The fifth step is to prepare the configuration file. If you are upgrading from 1.8 or 1.7 to 1.9, you need to complete this step. If you are just upgrading some minor updates and there's nothing to configure in the configuration file, then you can skip this step. In our case, we are upgrading from version 1.8 to the version 1.9 and because some of the settings from the configuration file were moved to the control panel, we need to prepare the new configuration file. If I would skip this step now and uh, we just copy the new config file uh, and override the old one, some of the system settings will be changed to default. On the right side, we see the files on my FTP server, and on the left side, we see the new remote read copper files. As you can see, there is date which indicates the version of those files. Now we need to go inside the includes folder on both sides. On the right side, on my FTP server, there's my current configuration file named config.php and I need to move some of those settings to the config19 on the left side. I will open both files in the text editor. I use Notepad++ application. If you want to use the same one, you can get it from notepad++.org. It's freely available. You can find the link somewhere below this video. It allows us to compare the text files, and that's exactly what we are going to do now. The only thing you need to change on the right side in the configuration file is the version. You need to change it to 1.9 on the right side so it matches the version you see on the left side. After we save and upload this file to FTP server, all the server EAs and client EAs will stop working. They will say that the EA version is updated, um, you need version 1.9. This way your customers will see that there's an update coming and at the same time this will stop all the EAs from working. They need to stop working before the update. It's very important. Next, let's compare other settings between the, these two files. Eventually, the config19.php file on the left side will have to be uploaded on your FTP server over writing the old config.php file on the right. Like I was saying, some of these settings were moved from the configuration file to the control panel, but those settings that still are on the new configuration file need to be set to the exactly same values as they appear on the right side in the configuration file. For example, we have a memcache enabled on the right side, so we need to enable it on the left side as well, so that when I upload the new configuration file, the memcache option will stay enabled. Do the same with the rest of the settings. For example, memcache unique ID on the left side uh, should also be set to the exact same value like it's on the right side. 
Note that some settings are missing on the left side while well, you see them on the right side but you do not need to move them. They stay on the right side and just ignore them. Next I go down where I find more settings. If you have any IPN items for your Clickbank or PayPal products you should transfer all of them to the left side too. In my case there is just some information for testing purposes but I will transfer it anyway. So I copy and paste it to the left side configuration file. That's pretty much it for my files. Now I'm going to save both files and then my FTP client says that config.php file was updated and it asks me if I want to upload it to the server. Once I upload it to the server, all EAs will stop working and say that they need to be updated to version 1.9. Now you can see I have my server EA running here and I have my client EA running over there. I upload the file and immediately get the error on the EA that the version is incompatible and I need the new version. That's a good thing. I need my EAs to stop working so I could do the update correctly. This is what it looks like. And here's the second client EA which has stopped working too. You can remove those EAs from the chart now, they won't work anyway. Let's go back to the FTP server. Another important thing to mention is that config.mysql.php file should not be changed if you're upgrading RTC files. You leave this file as is. If it was a new installation then obviously you would need to set your MySQL server login information in there. But in our case, this file already stores my MySQL login info, so we leave it as is. Next we move to the sixth step, which is uploading new files to the FTP server. First, I need to upload all the files from the includes folder from the left side to the includes folder on the right side on the FTP server, except for the configmysql.php file. Let's upload and override all the files with the new ones. Then I go up one level to the main RTC system folder on both sides. Now I need to upload and overwrite all of these files and folders except for the includes folder. In case you have customized version of those files on your FTP server, you will need to apply those changes by yourself because all these old files uh, will be overwritten with the new ones. I will pause the video now and upload those files and then get back to you in a minute. Ok, I'm back and all the files from the left side were uploaded to the FTP server on the right side. Now I have my files updated. Step 7 is to update the database which is performed from the welcome screen. Now I go to the welcome screen and refresh this page. It says that MySQL database needs to be updated. Here's the list of the updates that should be applied. Update will be applied in two parts. For first part, you need to click this update MySQL database button and then click OK to continue. The system will tell you that some of the updates were not applied and they will be listed for your information. Then we proceed to the second part of database update process. We need to update the configuration file and to do this we go to the includes folder in your FTP server on the right side. Rename our old config.php file to something like config old PHP and then rename config19.php file to config.php. Then we navigate to the welcome screen again and it will ask us to apply those few updates. We run the update again and now it is successfully completed. Note that if you are using memcache then you need to flush all memcache values from the admin settings page. Step 8 is to reset the data for trade summary monthly plugin. To do this you need to go to the welcome page once again and click the reset summary button. Chances are that nothing will change but if you got a lot of trades it's the best that those would be recalculated. If you do not have or do not use this plugin obviously you can skip the step. If for some reason this plugin does not appear on your welcome page you can enable it from the admin settings page in the TSM settings tab. Now step 9 is to prepare client and server software files for download. At the top of the welcome page you see there are links to download the client and signal provider software. Because I'm logged in as an admin I see both of them but if I log in as a client I will see only the client software link. 
if I log in as a signal provider, I will see only the download link for signal provider software. What we need to do right now is to create new download links, but in order to create them, we need to prepare the new files first. Here's how we do this. I pack the client software files into a zip archive because it's the easiest way for customers to have all files downloaded at once. I will copy and paste instruction manual files inside as well as the EA and DLL files. So in the end, I got two archives created, uh, one with the client EA files and the other with the server EA files. Then I upload those files to the FTP server and I go to the control panel website and enter new file names here on the admin settings page. The first download link should be for client EA files because this one will be visible for followers. And the second download link should be for server EA files because this one will be visible to signal providers. I will demonstrate how this looks like if I log in as a signal provider. Here are the steps signal provider needs to complete to start sending out his trading signals and below is the download link we have just created. If I log in as a follower, I will see this view. Here are the steps follower needs to complete to start receiving signals and here's the download link below for the uh, client software. Now I will log in as administrator again and continue with the software update. Step 10 is to install and run the new server EA. I will install it in the master MetaTrader terminal using auto installer. It is very important to run the new server EA first before running client EAs. I go to my master MetaTrader platform. I refresh the list of EAs and I see the new 1.9.1. EA in there. I drag it to the chart, then open inputs tab and I copy paste the EA username and password into the corresponding fields. You can set any other option you need but in my case I just click OK. Here we go. You see it working now. I will check the expert staff for any errors, make sure everything is OK. Everything looks fine there, no error messages. Next we go to the 11th step where I need to install the new client EA. Normally, this would be done by your clients, but in case you are hosting your client platforms on your server, then obviously you will do this by yourself. I will install the new client EA in the client MetaTrader terminal using auto installer. It is very important to start the client EA only after you already have the new server EA running. I go to the client MetaTrader terminal and refresh the list of expert advisors. Here is the new client EA. To start the EA I need to drag it to the chart and then enter EA password. But before this I want to tell you the most important thing about the new client EA. By default it goes with the magic number set to zero but you might request to get the client EA with the same magic number you were using before especially if you have open trades. Otherwise if you run the new client EA with different magic number than before, all your trades will get closed. If you run the new client EA with a magic number set to zero, while before you had used some other magic number, then EA will not manage your old open trades and just ignore them. Let me explain more about this. I will cancel this EA for now and let's move the mouse over these open trades. We see each of them has an ID of 70,000 assigned. It's the magic number. If I run the new client EA with the magic number of zero, it will not see those open trades and it will not manage them. In order to continue managing them, I need to set the same magic number in the client EA. In your case, you might get your EA already with the magic number preset to the same value you were using before or you could get it set to zero by default. It depends on your request. I will demonstrate both cases. Because those trades were opened with a static magic number of 70,000, I use the same magic number in the new client EA. And I also need to turn off all the suffix detection on this platform. I click OK to run the EA and it will continue to manage all these open trades. Then I go to my second MetaTrader client platform and open the navigator window. In this platform, if we go over each of these open trades, we'll see a different ID for each of them. This ID is the remote trade ticket number. 
This is how EA recognizes the parent of each trade. Also, this means that the old client EA had magic number set to zero. Basically, zero magic number is needed to enable the partial close feature and that's why I was running old client EA with a magic number set to zero before. Here's one partial close trade right here. This means on this platform I'll have to use zero magic number for the new client EA. I set the EA password and obviously leave the magic number at zero. I click OK and the EA starts to work. Everything looks fine. Now let's do a little test. Let's go to the master terminal and I apply the take profit and the stop loss on the Aussie dollar trade. Now let's go to the first client terminal where we see the same stop loss and take profit applied. Now we go to another client terminal and see that the stop loss and take profit were applied as well. This means both client EAs continue to manage the trades previously opened by the old client EA. I will do the same for the KDN trade. I will apply the stop loss and the tick profit. The client number one doesn't have the trade. It was closed previously because it doesn't support partial close. But the second client had the partial close feature enabled and this means that it should continue to manage the, the trade. Here we go. We have a new stop loss and tick profit on this trade. Now let's close the KDN trade and both pending orders. We see the first client close the pending orders and the second client close them as well, including the KDN trade. If we close the Aussie dollar trade, it gets closed on both clients' accounts. After you see that the client EAs and server EAs are working fine, you can go ahead and update all the rest of your client EAs. Notice your customers about this update and continue to use the new RTC. I hope you will enjoy all new features and I will see you in other videos. Bye.